In Gary, Indiana, there is no shortage of abandoned schools. The loss of the steel industry caused the population to plummet, leaving the need for schools to decline. In this episode, we will be taking a look at one of Gary's first high schools ever built that would establish the pathway for future education throughout the United States. The idea and implementation of Emerson School was created by William A. Wirt. Wirt became the superintendent of the Gary School System in 1907, which soon allowed him to employ his ideas under the Gary Plan. The Gary Plan was an educational system instituted in 1907. It was part of the larger scientific management movement in the early part of the 20th century that tried to increase efficiency in manufacturing through increased separation of worker roles and duties, as well as through incentivized wages. With Wirt as the superintendent, he began to expand the school curriculum by adding music classes, physical activities, art classes, science labs, and recreation. In addition to the curriculum, he implemented plans to lengthen the school day, initiated teacher hiring standards, and played a part in the overall designing of the schools. The city of Gary and Wirt started plans and built the first school within Gary. That school was Jefferson, and it opened in 1907 and was housed in a three-story building. This school didn't fit Wirt's ideal. With Wirt's plan to create the school he envisioned, he quickly commissioned William Itner to construct the school. His requirements for the school called for 30 classrooms, 7 laboratories, separate band and orchestra rooms, art studios, and other rooms for industrial and household arts. Once the plan was approved, ground was soon broken. Emerson was constructed and opened in September of 1909. It was the first high school in Gary. The building featured all the latest amenities and was everything that Wirt envisioned. Among the most unique features of Emerson High School was a student-run zoo and bank. This was unprecedented at the time. Besides having a zoo, the school was the first to have an indoor pool, double-decker gym, and an upstairs running track. This school was one of the most advanced in the world at the time. The opening of Emerson with Wirt would be the flagship for him to become an innovator of education. Wirt used Ralph Waldo Emerson to implement his work-study-play education system within the school. Work-study-play called for students to be separated into two platoons, the first utilizing academic facilities while the second used the non-academic facilities, for example, the gym, workshop, auditorium, and track. The goal of this method would be to keep all facilities in use and to keep costs low. Another goal was to spread creativity throughout the students. Soon after, the work-study-play concept would spread across the United States. This was a new form that took over the traditional schoolhouse method. This was revolutionary in education, even if it was 100 years ago and controversial at the time. Upon opening Emerson, the population was predominantly white, but by the 1920s, Gary saw an increase in the black community. To help with the crowding issue, Wirt approved the transfer of black students to a selection of Gary schools. Due to Wirt's forward thinking and attempt at inclusion, Emerson admitted six black students in 1926. A year later, the black student population reached 18 students. Sadly, Many in the white community didn't stand for these decisions, and a large number of students staged a walkout, which then led to a strike. The walkout consisted of 1,300 students, parents, and other protesters who stood out in front of Emerson. They refused to go back inside until the school returned to all-white status. This caused Wirt to act. The plan he implemented was to create an all-black high school that would be Theodore Roosevelt High School. This issue would come up again in Emerson's history and another walkout would happen in 1945. The cultural clash in Gary gained attention from Frank Sinatra. He even came to Gary to have a benefit to spread positivity and equality at the Gary Memorial Auditorium. 
Sinatra attempted to ease the tensions of the people, but the people only wanted to hear his performance, not his words. Finally, in 1948, Gary faced a change in leadership within the school board and among city officials. This led the walls of segregation in Emerson to fall. After desegregation, Emerson began to flourish for decades. However, it soon had a decline in enrollment because of the shrinking tax base in Gary due to the loss of jobs and the loss of the steel industry. By 1981, the enrollment was so low that the school board had to transition their facilities to deal with the financial costs. Emerson students were moved to a different location for the time being. That same year, Emerson would close officially as a high school and soon would reopen as a magnet school for the arts. In 1982, Emerson would open as a magnet school for the arts with 120 students for 5th, 6th, and 7th grades. Over time, the school would expand enrollment for students in grades 5th through high school. The main difference with Emerson and the other schools throughout Gary was that it didn't offer any athletics. But even though the school lost sports, it gained a culture. The students that attended could now major in dance, drama, piano, voice, band, art, and strings. Throughout the 1980s, the school struggled with establishing an identity and mission. The school lacked structure when it came to the name and how it would stay funded. Students would call the institution the Gary School, Gary Emerson, Emerson VPA, Gary High School, and Emerson High. This confusion forced the Gary School Board to address the issue. In February of 1987, the school board had finally made a decision. They announced that the new name would be Emerson School for the Visual and Performing Arts. This would come after five years of being reopened. In 1998, the Gary School Board planned a $950,000 renovation for Emerson. The renovation would include a staged drapery and rigging project, addition of a computer lab, and small renovations to the interior offices. Other things that would change throughout the school would be the transformation of the indoor swimming pool. The pool had not been used for years and was transformed into a shower and dressing area. By the early 2000s, the building was plagued with structural issues that the school district could no longer put off. The school would be two years short of its 100th birthday in 2007 and in that year, students began to get sick. After inspection, it was discovered that Emerson has a serious mold problem. The roof was deteriorated, plumbing was leaking above classrooms and behind walls, and mold had been taking over the school for many years. The board acted quickly with what little funding they had. By March of 2008, a major cleanup effort was in place for Emerson. Contractors replaced ceiling tiles, carpet, paint, window shades, leaky pipes, drywall, and patched parts of the school's roof. After renovations were complete, the school district did an evaluation of the air quality throughout the school. The Gary School Board announced that the mold levels were reported to be within acceptable levels for students to return. Parents, however, were not convinced and called for further inspection of the school. After a more thorough inspection, it revealed that the mold issues were still present and worse than they had thought. The school district had depleted any funds they had to fix the school and it left them with little choice. During the last few weeks of the school year in 2008, the board announced for the next school year they would shift students from Emerson to Kennedy King Elementary School. When the bell rang to introduce summer in 2008, the Ralph Waldo Emerson School closed its doors for the final time. When the school closed, little was removed before it was abandoned. Instruments and student files had been kept and stored, but equipment, furniture, and books were left behind. Ultimately, it was a fungus that would shut Emerson down, but not before it served the Gary community for nearly 100 years.